Good morning. How are you? It's been a great week so far. Looking forward to another good chapel day today. Um, for those of you that don't know, there's a place in Lubbock uh, you can go to, uh, and it's called Trapped. Raise your hand if you've heard of Trapped. Okay, so Trapped is, they, put, they lock you in this room, and there's clues to figure out how to get your way out, and they give you an hour to do it. Okay? <laughs> Sounds fun, doesn't it? Okay, focus. So, uh, I was thinking about that today, and how that if you were going to go, it'd be really great if you got some advice from someone who had been before, right? So today, our senior chapel is about advice. These guys have been here. They've been here for a long time, some of them. They know what to be careful of in Miss Garrett's class. They know how to be successful here because they've done it, and their wisdom is worth listening to. So let's take a listen to uh, this video that has lots of good senior advice. My senior advice would be to not start your high school career off in a neck brace, you'd end up with a weird black best friend. My uh, senior advice is to uh, break a uh, newcomer's neck to Trinity because you never know that that new person might become your best friend later on. I wish I would have known that high school actually really does go by fast because everyone says that, but it is really true. So that's my, uh, my senior advice would be to do as much as you can in high school because it's a lot of fun and you just need to enjoy it and try to do as many things as you possibly can because it's a lot of fun. Pretty sure I just said that twice. Um, my senior advice is to not take physics online because it will ruin your life. My advice is twofold. One is to look your very best every day and be sure just to wear the best clothes and put on a bunch of makeup. And my second advice is to come to school a little bit early every day and definitely don't come in at the 815 bell every day. My senior advice would be to start thinking about your senior advice before your senior <laughs> because if you do your senior advice on the day that they film the senior advice you'll look like a fool if you don't know what you're doing. Uh, my favorite senior, no not favorite, okay sorry. <laughs> <laughs> you're so okay, what I wish I could have learned, could have, okay okay redo that. Okay. Um, my favorite senior advice, I mean, my <laughs> <laughs> advice would be to not just like yourself, but to love yourself, quirks and all. My senior advice would be to be Miss Garrett's TA, because you get to spend lots of time with her and it's great. <laughs> <laughs> My senior advice would be to just enjoy every moment, uh, especially because time does fly by. Uh, you'll blink and all of a sudden it's graduation. To do whatever you can to sit in the back of Miss Garrett's class, so that way if you need to sleep, you can. <laughs> My bad. <laughs> okay. What do I say? No, no. <laughs> oh. My senior advice would be to enjoy your last year high school and just to participate in everything because it will all be over soon. To do your homework the night it's assigned, as stupid as that sounds, it really helps and don't stress out about the little things. To not worry about doing the homework the night it's assigned, but to actually do your homework, that always helps. I'm sorry. Okay, am I good? Okay. What I wish I would have known is to not keep wishing like the next thing would come because I always look forward to the next big event like prom and homecoming and summer. And so just take everything, you know, step by step and enjoy every little moment. Okay, so my senior advice for this year would be to take regular English online if you can. Do your homework and don't fall back because if you fall back, you're never going to catch up in Miss Garrett's class. What I wish I could have... It's not on. <laughs> it is too. I never turned it on. <laughs> my senior advice is to move in with your best friend so that you can help each other with your homework. My advice is to be sure to invest uh, whatever resources are necessary to go on a missions trip sometime in your high school career. You'll sure be blessed through that time. 
My senior advice would be to always bribe Miss Garrett, give her gifts. She'll definitely bump up like 10 points on everything. <laughs> oh, is it going? Oh, okay. Oh, okay. What? <laughs> okay. My senior advice is uh, if you're in Mrs. Walcott's class, be sure to do her homework. I made the mistake of not doing that. Ended up with uh, C's. Whoops. My senior advice is to not dread Miss Garrett's class because it's not that bad. She'll make you mad sometimes, but, you know, you'll get over it and you'll live. And, you know, she'll, uh, she'll normally always pass you. <laughs> My advice is to not stress about... Uh, college and don't get like too stressed about your schoolwork because I didn't try that hard and I got good scholarships and got into Baylor. Uh, my senior advice would be to wear orange to Miss Garrett's class uh, every day. She loves the color. She, I don't know. She, <laughs> she really doesn't like that color. She'll take points off your paper. Just kidding. Um, oh, okay. This is, okay, it's good. <laughs> my senior advice, especially for the juniors now would be start thinking of your senior advice before they tape you. Um, my senior advice would be just study hard and especially for Miss Garrett's class. Is read your summer reading books. If you don't, then you wish that with a bad grade. Really bad grade. <laughs> my senior advice would be to cherish the time you have with your classmates and your grade and everything because your time goes by really fast. I don't even remember half of this year. What I wish I... Okay, I can... Okay. I wish... What? Um, what I wish I would have known for senior year is that you should turn your homework in on time. But I'm still working on that one. Um, if I could give any advice for your senior year, I would, give, I would tell you that turning your work in is um, a big part of senior year and studying and getting things um, done on time. No procrastination, because it really does hurt you. Whenever you get the chance to bond or be with the rest of the senior class, be more open and willing to step out of your comfort zone because it will benefit you uh, social-wise throughout the school year and for a long, ter long time um, peers and relationships. Okay, well, my senior advice would be to really uh, get to know your teachers. They're awesome. Um, they have so many wise words of wisdom. So seize that opportunity. All right. So my senior advice would be, uh, don't care what others think about yourself. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> For you. <laughs> okay. My senior advice would be to not to apply to every college that you know you're not going to go to. If you end up doing that like I did, you'll uh, write a lot of college essays and figure out a lot of stuff about yourself that you never even wanted to know. What you need to know is that high school goes fast, but it's not always fast like it's like a lot of fun. It's kind of fast like a really bad car accident. And so you need to know that, I mean, like work hard and do your best. Like do what you can, but like, don't hurt yourself. Because I can tell you I've spent like entire months of my life where I was just miserable because I cared too much about the little things. And you need to understand that not everything that happens is going to be, like, of the utmost consequence. Like, try to loosen up a little bit and use the time to find out about yourself and what you want to do. Okay, my senior advice would be if you're going on a basketball trip or a volleyball trip, take all your homework because you're never going to know when you're going to get snowed in and miss a week of school. Um, I wish uh, I would have known to keep my priorities straight in high school. School and sports are important, but they're really not that important in the uh, grand scheme of things. My senior advice would be to find moderation in your life and focus on others because in the end, what really matters. For my senior advice, I would say make sure you always dress as classy as Ethan Frenari. <laughs> advice would be to go ahead and try out for the musical it's fun to look stupid every now and then, especially in front of the entire school. My senior advice is to lighten up and have fun with your friends because uh, you can try so hard and get so far, but in the end, it doesn't even matter. My senior advice would be not to do football, cross country, and Miss Lacey's class all in the same year. It's not very fun. My senior advice would be 
I know that you can do a lot, but don't commit to taking eight classes your senior year. Get an off or a TA or a academic study hall or something, but it's not necessarily a good idea to try to do eight academic classes all four years of high school. That's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> don't mess up in Miss Gear's class because it's going to be heaven if you accomplish what she asks you of, or it's going to be hell if she decides to kill you. Um, my senior advice would be to um, give yourself plenty of time when it comes to doing schoolwork. Don't always cram and stay up till 2 a.m. because uh, it'll make high school more enjoyable if you give yourself plenty of time and you're not always getting up early in the morning to study for a last minute Garrett test. <laughs> okay, uh, my senior advice would be to not run head first into your teammate during a flag football game. It doesn't feel very well. It really actually hurts a lot. Don't, just don't stick your tongue out at Mrs. Garrett because that will happen. <laughs> <laughs> All right, my senior advice would be to know that the couch in the back of Mrs. Garrett's room reclines. So that's pretty nice once you know. Um, what I wish I would have known was to, to actually study for Ms. Gare's test because you fail. And I didn't know that. All right, my senior advice would just be uh, don't sweat the small things and just trust in God with everything. And it just takes a big uh, weight off your shoulders whenever you trust him. And life just takes care of itself. And so carefree, and then you can just like do whatever you want in Ms. Gare's class. And it's awesome. What I would have known earlier is that there's a CC's pizza that's less than five minutes away from Trinity. My senior advice is to take care of your college applications early on so you don't have to worry about them later on in your senior year. It'll take a lot of stress off. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay, what I wish I would have known was to buy a better razor for Ms. Garrett's class. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> My name is Cade Savage. For those of you who don't know me, I'm a senior here. Uh, I've been here since I was six months old. That does things to a person. And um, <laughs> for those of you who do know me, you're probably wondering why uh, they picked me to speak. And it's okay because I'm wondering the same thing. So uh, let's start in prayer. Heavenly Father, God, thank you for this day. Thank you for the opportunity to come to you in an environment, Lord, that uh, just encourages the teaching of your word and just, um, just a free country, God. Thank you again uh, just for the opportunity to speak, Lord. I ask you would just uh, speak through me, just help it to be your words, and just help us all to uh, receive something from you today. In your name we pray. Amen. So when Ms. Garrett first approached me about speaking, she texted me and uh, told me that I would receive my topic the next day. And that kind of scared me because knowing Ms. Garrett, that could have been something about Hamlet, could have been something about, you know, the relation of, you know, homosexuality in America. But I actually got... Um, the topic of what we'd learned. It's kind of a broad topic when you look at our grade. You know, we've got uh, athletes, um, we've got really smart people, we've got really funny people. Um, we've got such a diverse grade that we learn from each other. You know, we've got basketball players like Craig. They teach us the importance of wearing uh, protective headgear no matter what sport you're playing. <laughs> uh, we've got Cade Kirk, who's taught us the importance and the reach of the educational disciplinary system multiple times. <laughs> We've got guys like Corey, who've taught us how to responsibly enjoy cartoons uh, <laughs> every day. It's not just quite the uh, people, though. We've got an environment to learn. Uh, they give us many opportunities. You see, we've got uh, Thursday leadership for the junior and senior gentlemen in the class who can relate. Um, we've learned several things, uh, reject passivity, accept responsibility. It's really a good program that they have going, and I hope they continue it. Um, we've also learned some interesting things, such as uh, if you're ever playing volleyball and a girl gets out of the car and you can smell her from the volleyball court, she'll probably end up being your wife. <laughs> Wednesday leadership. Um, I can't speak for everybody in that, but I know that um, CJ really first coined the term, 
I wish we would have done Wednesday leadership earlier because um, I could have put that I know a different language on my application. It's the half vicious sobbing and crying and the half English speech. Um, but guys, in all seriousness, after prayerful consideration, uh, Ms. Garrett and I have talked, we've prayed, and we're pretty confident that we can uh, relate the lesson that our grade has learned and taken throughout the years um, with my personal story. I'd like to begin by saying uh, many of you guys know I was raised by my grandparents on my mom's side. Um, they're awesome people, and uh, now this probably explains why I love music from the 60s, right? Um, my mother was an alcoholic, and she uh, was also a drug addict. This was, uh, she was constantly in and out of sobriety. And uh, my father wasn't really there much, my biological father when I was young. Um, wasn't quite the uh, Christian example that one would hope for. Um, I can't help but remember one time he told me, you know, okay, John and Paul said, all you need is love. I said, what verse of the Bible is that found in? He said, I'm not talking about the Bible, I'm talking about John Lennon and Paul McCartney, the Beatles. So, um, on a serious note though, for those of you who do have an alcoholic or drug, drug addicted family member, I can speak uh, from experience when I say it's pretty rough. Um, I remember when I was young, my uh, grandmother would have to lie in bed with me. When my mom uh, got home, she would try to handle the uh, situation as appropriately as possible without me getting involved. And, uh, you know, a lot, a lot of crying when I was younger, a lot of scared times. But uh, family life was tough. And uh, when I was five years old, I decided, hey, I'm going to do something about it, right? Um, see, I, if you know me, if you truly hang out with me, you know I'm a nerd. I love physics, chemistry, you name it, I love it. And... Um, you see, I had heard of this Newton's third law, and for those of you who are in physics, you probably know it now. It says that um, every action has an opposite reaction. And I realized that in my life, you know, my initial action, the family I was born into, wasn't quite the action that I had hoped for. But um, you see, it was a negative action. And I decided that I was going to work myself to death to make it a positive action, to make it a reaction, a positive reaction. Um, I decided that I wanted to go to a, a United States of America Service Academy. I thought that would make something out of myself. Um, I was unbelievably driven, you guys. I mean, I would bring home massive military textbooks, chemistry textbooks. When I was, you know, second grade, third grade, and I would read five or six pages a night. Um, physically, I remember other kids would run down to the park at my house, and they would play uh, with their friends. Uh, they'd see me running down there uh, to get my workout in at six years old, you know. I would uh, jump up on the pull-up bars, and they'd look up at me. They'd just say, man, that kid's weird. But, um, you know, things haven't changed much since, uh, since that point, but that is what it is. <clears throat> but you can see, guys, no matter how hard I worked, um, my family situation wasn't quite getting better. In fact, it was worsening. Um, you see, uh, it wasn't until I was in the fifth grade that I finally realized what I was chasing was empty. I was in the shower um, when I was praying, because that's the best pl uh, place to pray, for those of you who know. And... Um, I just said, Lord, you know, this is empty. Uh, prestige, uh, academia, um, a rock and six pack. It's, uh, it's just not worth, worth chasing. And uh, I told God, I said, Lord, if you'll give me the opportunity to serve you, I will follow you the best of my ability. And that's really where my, uh, my goals changed. You know, I, I wanted to do the best I could in school. I wanted to do the best I could in sports. But it really changed from serving uh, myself or an institution to serving the Lord. Life went on this way. Um, things continued to worse, uh, worsen. Uh, actually, my family life somewhat eroded even more. Uh, but I, I stayed firm in my purpose of serving God and running after Him. I fell a lot, and um, things weren't quite the way I hoped, but I did my best in that aspect. Um, things really, really hit a, uh, an apex in my freshman year. Um, my freshman year, my mother relapsed uh, again at a pretty inconvenient time, and uh, it kind of tore my family apart. I can remember, um, actually, the Friday that I had a great expect uh, expectations test on Monday, I had to uh, go hunt my mother down because she was believed to uh, be harboring a convicted felon and a, uh, someone who had escaped from the police. Um, let me tell you, that's not really normal for a freshman kid who can't drive. Uh, going into a hotel, looking for your mother, thinking, is this guy going to try to kill me? Is my mom going to be okay? What's going to happen next? But uh, I can't say any of that was fun, uh, especially studying for great expectations. But what I can say is God gave me a peace and a satisfaction in pursuing him. Um, while I may have not enjoyed what I was doing, I knew that I was doing it for the Lord, and it made a difference. You can't buy purpose, and uh, God gives us a purpose that is unmatched. 
Uh, life continued on through high school, as Will said, uh, oftentimes like a bad car accident. But um, as many of you know, John Beck and I have been uh, blessed with appointments to the service academies. Uh, let me clarify, actually. I was blessed with an appointment to the Naval Academy, which is a very rigorous institution that will try you and fail you in every way. John Beck received an appointment to West Point, so that, that's that. <laughs> but, um, you know, the Naval Academy appointment was one of my dreams. You know, I'd always wanted to go. I pictured it since I was five years old. Uh, the night that I received it was supposed to be one of the happiest nights of my life. Instead, it was almost one of the saddest. I realized that the promise I made to God was much more important and almost harder to keep. You see, it's like Ms. Garrett says, a contrivance. Uh, right when you uh, get ready to leave, you figure out everything that you would want to stay for. Um, obviously, I know many of the seniors share the same, same burden that I do. Uh, in little things. You know, just the other day I was walking around, I stumbled upon the coolest person I've ever met in my life the other day. I can't help but think that I'll just be privileged to see them again, much less talk to them. On a much less serious note, I may be the only Texan in here who doesn't own a pair of cowboy boots and despises country music. But being away from Texas is going to be a little rough, right? Um, I know some of us share that in common. And uh, some of the farmers and country people around here, I guess they're pretty cool to hang around with. They're pretty fun. Uh, it's probably a cooler culture than the uh, Naval Academy midshipmen. But I think you can make a pretty, pretty tough case that uh, breaking a sound barrier in a jet is also pretty cool. So you know, that is what it is. But... You know, guys, on, on a much more serious note, you know, I attended my brother's seven-year-old birthday party the other day. It was at Copper Caboose. He had all the kids running around. Things were crazy. And, you know, it, it just hit me because my mom came up to me and said, uh, my biological mom who has been sober for several years now, which is awesome. Uh, you know, she said, you won't see another one of your brother's birthdays until he's your age, at least. And I thought, wow. What, what we're going after as a senior class, what we're leaving I know that most seniors look around at our home, our family, our friends, and um, we think about living a life of comfort here. To know that we may miss out on some of uh, the relationships, the friendships, the uh, times with our family is heart-wrenching, but nonetheless, we move on. Consequently, ladies and gentlemen, the key lesson that we have learned as a grade is our purpose. While we, uh, we may be heading in different directions, we will be chasing the same goal. We know that pursuing whatever God has for us may, be, uh, may bring temporary pain and suffering. Uh, we may lose out on some relationships, friendships, family, maybe even some fun times uh, just around Lubbock, if that's possible. Um, but it will yield an eternal reward, uh, reward. Following God's purpose yields a peace and satisfaction that no person, no place, no job, no vocation, no sum of money, nothing can yield. Not to say that this won't take different forms. We've got guys like CJ, who's going to be an awesome wor uh, worship pastor. Guys like Maled, who's going to go be a doctor. Um, Andy Kitten, who's going to be an attorney. You know, awesome stuff. My boy John Beck in the back, who is, um, uh, he could probably go to Harvard, uh, Colorado School of Mines. But he's going to go serve his God and serve his country at West Point. Um, this theme of purpose in serving God is not something that we've stumbled upon this year. This has been going on really since day one. Uh, in fact, just the other night, John and I, we've been talking purpose in this academy thing for a while. Um, a couple of weeks ago, John was showing me some stuff or removal of stuff or something on the internet that um, really, it just got us talking how much we were losing and missing out on uh, leaving and following God. After prom, I... Uh, we dropped our dates off around 2.30. Um, I, I heard some people went camping. That's awesome. Just wasn't quite um, as family friendly, I guess, for John and I as we, as we would like to go to. But um, you see, John came over to my house, and we were talking purpose until about 6 a.m. in the morning. Um, it's not just John and I. It's the entire grade. I had someone approach me the other day. It was on Monday about something they saw on the Internet or a social media site, I believe, that kind of got them talking to me. And I thought, you know, wow, you know, we, we're leaving. Uh, as real as it is, you know, they talk about from the time you're a seventh grader, for those of you who have been here with me, from the time that you're a pre-K, they talk about making a difference in the world and how different the real world is than inside the Trinity bubble, right? And here it is. But guys, we've learned that it's not about me serving the almighty United States Navy or uh, Zyler serving whatever office he ends up running for. Um, it's about serving the greatest kingdom on earth and off it, the kingdom of our Lord. 
I would like to close this time by reading a small portion of a letter that some of you may be familiar with. Uh, I think it was pretty big at some point. Maybe you guys have deleted it or forgotten about it because it's not that important, I guess, uh, in the grand scheme of things. Um, I've altered a couple of things in here, namely eyes to wheeze, just to be a little bit more applicable to uh, this grade and the time that we're in right now. I told God when I was young that I vowed to serve him if he gave me the opportunity. I now understand why the Bible says don't make vows to God. I told my parents the next day that one of the most important pieces of love was sacrifice. Christ did it for us, and it says in John 15, 13, that no man has greater love than this, to lay down his life for a friend. I told God I wanted to sacrifice for him so I could show him my love. I knew his plan was for me to serve him through serving various institutions. I thought this meant telling others of his awesome and redemptive grace in a foreign, hurting, and dangerous land, losing a friend, a limb, or even my sanity, possibly even laying down my own life one day. Unfortunately, as a senior class, we now know, the first sacrifice we've had to make is worse than all of those combined. We would rather face any one of those than leave behind our family, the comfort of our home, many of our friends here in this school. But you see, his power, the Lord's power, and might took human form for our sinful and wretched flesh. This is the greatest form of sacrifice there will ever be. We may not understand his direction now. I know it may lead me into the valley of the shadow of death. And we know things may be rough in the future. Regardless, we've been given the opportunity to serve our Lord. And that's far more than any of us deserve. What an awesome God to give us an opportunity to run and serve him. To be a part of something greater than ourselves. And while we uh, have received a little, uh, a little more training here than maybe some of us have, have wanted, we're, uh, we're ready. Guys, I'd like to present the class of 2015. We're not graduating a class. We're commissioning officers into the service of our Lord. And I'm confident that the vast majority of our grade is ready to serve him whatever vocation or uh, job we go into. Thank you very much. Let's go to class.